Okay, welcome to Rockstock Channel. It's March 2nd. It's been a little while since we've uh, done a video, but we're going to start doing a bunch more uh, this month and next. Uh, we're going to start a series here of thoughts, largely uh, me interviewing Rodney. Before we launch into the interview, we'd like to thank all our Patreon sponsors. And for those of you who are new, share a bit about us. RK Equity is an advisory firm run by Rodney Hooper and me, Howard Klein. We are exclusively focused on raising awareness about companies producing or developing the next generation critical raw materials that are powering Tesla's EV battery energy transition. Please register your email at rkequity.com and follow Rodney and me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please also subscribe to this channel, Rockstock Channel on YouTube, as well as Lithium Ion Rocks on SoundCloud for our podcasts. Please note, Rodney and me are not financial advisors or broker dealers. Nothing you hear in this video is investment advice. Please do your own research and read the disclaimer at the end of this video or on our website. Thanks again for the support and let's get into the video. So Howard, interesting that... Um all of the companies pronouncing uh, going uh, all electric or mostly electric. You've got Ford in Europe by 2030, Volvo all electric globally. You've got Jaguar by 2025. You've got uh, Land Rover 60% electric by 2030. But interesting that none of those have internal cell supply. So they are making a proclamation on switching to all electric without, as best as my understanding can tell, an absolute categorical guarantee on battery cell supply going into their vehicles. So it will be interesting to see how this unfolds. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm sort of raising is we know that uh, EVs will be or should be cheaper than internal combustion engines from 23, 24, latest 2025. So by 2030, economically, it shouldn't even be a debate. I guess some of the issues will center around how prevalent is charging infrastructure and is there sufficient amount of those. I know you've got some charging companies on your uh, spec list, but it will need a significant amount of uh, spending and infrastructure to get that in place for people to be totally comfortable. But yes, EVs will be cheaper and um, a number of major cities and countries you know, in the auto market list have stated that they are going to ban the sale of new internal combustion engine vehicles by 2025 through to 2030. And then some with hybrids trickling out to 2035, a couple of countries beyond that, but it's likely we're going to see, as long as you can see the infrastructure, it's likely we're going to see it move forward and consumers are likely to make that choice for you on a no subsidy basis on a, on sooner. What do you, what's your gut tell you? Uh, is there going to be a shortage uh, or um, well, as we know, inability sales, like in semiconductors? So I, I can't see how having been burnt before that cathode and cell manufacturers wouldn't want or wouldn't write into their contracts clauses that gives them an out if they don't have sufficient raw material. So I would think that given the volumes that we're now talking, so it was one thing when EV penetration was one or 2% to look around an oversupplied market and find a bit more material. It's a whole nother thing when you're moving to, you know, some people talking, you know, a hundred percent all EV. So uh, it's likely that we will see some maneuvers either by the cathode or, or cell manufacturers to indemnify themselves to some extent, or we're going to start seeing m a activity upstream. It's a matter of time, I think. Look, this leads into um, our second topic, uh, which is lithium green premiums, uh, because Albemarle and their partner Mineral Resources talked about, uh, you know, expanding largely in Western Australia and in China, using Western Australia hard rock into China. And that is, uh, you know, if all of the volumes are going to be passing through China, it goes to long travel distances and the like. Uh, but that is Albemarle, the biggest producer in the world strategy is largely in the run up to 2025 is focusing most of their effort on hydroxide on Australia or Australia into China. And that must be to serve the European and the US market because they're they don't really have too many operations in the North American or European market. So 
how does that translate with you know the, the EU's plans to have you know more locally sourced and uh, you know and Tesla's uh, articulation that you know distance traveled uh, needs to be reduced across all commodities. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a good it's a good point. I, we've known how we've chatted about this many times on an economic on a purely economic basis. The cost of construction, you know, the capex for hydroxide plants or carbonate plants in China is five or six thousand dollars a ton, and it's twenty five x China. So on a capex basis, and on an economic basis, especially if you are feeding into an integrated project, China is the cheapest. And in terms of turnaround times and construction times, it is also way ahead of the rest of the world. But that raises some questions. You know, uh, we've seen in terms of some LCA analysis, um, you're talking about a, a 10 uh, tons of, of carbon difference between hard rock to hydroxide versus brine. So uh, at what point, um, and there's also, I guess, sustainability flags that may be raised. At what point is a certain level of, of carbon absolute unacceptable in places like Europe? And at what point is um, our carbon taxes going to come into play? Now, Europe has unashamedly said they want to diversify and they're looking for localized production. And we're seeing the US making a lot of noises and likely to catch up quickly with Biden's 100 day, 100 day review. From a mathematical point of view, and I, I raised this quite a while ago, unless your carbon taxes come in at around 150 to $200 a ton, and they've been rising worldwide and up to about 60, but I think you need 150 to $200 per ton to make ex China projects compete on a like-for-like -like basis on an integrated project. Okay, do you see in Europe or the United States, there, there, there's some, I mean, I guess are OEMs gonna be willing to pay a premium uh, or will it be mandated by some government body or will there be taxes? Look, I, I, think, to, I think to some extent, um, you know, how if, if everyone is going all electric and demand is going to pick up aggressively, you cannot, have something like hydroxide with over 80% coming out of one country, given what we've experienced in COVID. We could say that it, it can't be possible, but Albemarle has announced that they're looking to buy more conversion capacity in China. So they're not saying, you know, we're going to build this capacity in North America or, or in Europe. And I think they're looking at things like for on an, like an economic basis because it's so much cheaper to build in China um, and the OPEX is lower. So factoring in like distances and carbon footprint is is important, but not so important, you know, relative to you know dollars and cents. So uh, that math calculation would change if the cost of importing you know hydroxide from China into Europe or the United States was was higher, right? Or if there were some other kind yeah, if, of carbon if you're charging tax. 100 if you're charging 150 to 200 dollars a ton of carbon, it's going to add 1500 to $2,000 a ton on a relative basis, relative to Brian. So will that, you know, or, or a clean, or a clean, um, a clean uh, spodumen to hydroxide ex China uh, project. So is that enough? It's probably likely to tip the scales. Um, and then you just purely have the risk and the need for diversification because you need, you know, it's one thing again when you are carrying inventories for basically what's a sideshow uh, product. But when penetration rates are 15, 20, 30, 40, you can't be just last minute carrying low inventories, not worrying about these things. You need to, to carry a much bigger inventory, uh, you know, for EVs. And you're going to, you know, you're going to be of some concern that any sort of uh, supply hiccup can throw out what is a meaningful part of your sales. Plus, the reality, uh, again, is if you look at the Rivian, you know, Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, Lordstown, these are all EV companies now. We're seeing the rise not of, of uh, OEM shifting to EV, you're seeing 
all EV companies with massive market caps uh, finding their way onto the market. And for them, you know, no supply isn't an option. 